Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Upper Room Fellowship of Jesus Christ Sabbath message. I'm Pastor Rufus, and I have with me Sister Joanna, who will be singing a song to prepare our hearts for the message. <clears throat> Excuse me. But before we uh, go to Sister Joanna, let's go to our Father in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day, your ordained day of rest for your people. Lord, we pray that you will be with us today and just give us all that rest. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the privilege of delivering this message. And we thank you for those who are here to listen and to learn and to receive your word today. Lord, and uh, <clears throat> just be with us all and anoint everyone here. Anoint the ears of those who are listening. Anoint the mouth of those who are, of myself, who's delivering this message. And Lord, uh, we, we just pray that you'll be with everyone and uh, give us uh, the desires of your heart. And now, Sister Joanna. Amen. You spoke the words and all the worlds came into order. You waved your hands and planets filled the empty skies. You placed the woman and the man inside the garden. And though they fell, they found compassion in your eyes. Oh, Lord, I stand amazed at the wonder of your deeds. And yet a greater wonder brings me to my knees. Lord, I praise you because of who you are, not just for all the mighty things that you have done. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You're all the reason that I need to voice my praise because of who you are. One holy night you brought your promise from a virgin and promise grew till he revealed to us your heart. Enduring love displayed throughout his crucifixion and in the dark you tore the grave and death apart. Oh, Lord, I stand amazed at the wonder of your deeds, and yet a greater wonder brings me to my knees. Lord, I praise you because of who you are not just for all the mighty things that you have done. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You're all the reason that I need to voice my praise. Oh, Lord, I praise you because of who you are. Not just for all the mighty things that you have done. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. You're all the reason that I need to voice my prayers because of who you are. Because of who you are, because of who you 
Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Sister Joanna. Beautiful. And now we'll go to our good news message. But before we get into this message, I'd like to just review some facts with you, especially for those of you who are here every Saturday or most Saturdays and hear our messages from week to week. Now, over about uh, the past month, uh, all the good news messages has been closely related. And I think you'll notice from this one how much they are. Now, I'll just name a few of those. We had a message called exhorting the Lord. Now, praising the Lord is exalting the Lord. It's, it's very similar. However, there are themes that runs through the Bible from, from beginning, near the beginning, from the Old Testament through and unto, into the New Testament that uh, speaks of God's re plans of redemption. That's why they're called good news. They're all good news. The good news is the good news of, of God's grace toward us. The good news that brings us salvation in Christ. And all these messages end in the things that Christ is doing and the things that the, his New Testament Christians are doing and those who wrote the New Testament um, and his disciples. And so these are all good news messages. Now I mentioned exalting the Lord. This one is called praising the Lord. Last, week, last week's messages was called praying. Now we pray to the Lord. Now that's also very similar, praising the Praying for the Lord is also praising the Lord. So they all kind of intertwine here. And I think you'll learn more about that as we go along. And so now we'll go to today's message called Praising the Lord. And we'll begin with the introduction. Today's Sabbath message Today's Sabbath message reviews God's response to those lifting him up in praise. We find the Lord bringing victories over the enemies of those praising his name. When we praise him for his greatness, his response brings acts of kindness with greatness on full display. Scripture is filled with God's people proclaiming his name and lifting praises to him. David proclaimed his salvation while praising his marvelous deeds among the nations. Our praises invariably exalt him for his amazing acts of love and grace. Amen. Amen. And so we'll go to our first set of, of passages. Moses, and we'll begin with Moses praises God's greatness. Okay, and this Passage is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses two through four. And Moses is speaking here. And he says, let my teachings fall like rain and my words descend like dew, like showers on new grass, like abundant rain on tender plants. I will proclaim the name of the Lord. Oh, praise the greatness of our God. He is a rock. His works are perfect, and all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is he. Now, notice something about this passage. It, it begins with uh, Moses here make it a symbolic statement of his, regarding his teaching, regarding his words, what he's about to say. And I'll, I'll uh, point those out to you. He said, let my teaching fall like rain and my words like dew, like showers on grass. Okay, rain, dew, and showers on grass, they're all very related to growing grass, right? And so here we see Moses is, is what he said, symbolically said, is Lord, let my teachings give life, give growth, cause growth. And that's what God's word does. Like, like water grows grass or the rain grows the, the, the tender grass, 
God's word produces growth in our heart. So I wanted to point that out to you in this passage that's so wonderfully written with those symbolic cues to, to help us to, to see the depth of the word here. Uh, God's word grows, produces growth in his people. And that's what this passage really brings out in a profound way. So our next uh, passage, David's Song of Praise. And of course, this is written uh, uh, by uh, David, King David. And here, uh, honestly, I'm not sure about the setting for this, so I, I, I can't. I've, I've got it. I'm confused between two settings, and I don't want to give you the wrong one. So we'll just read the passage here. It says, sing to the Lord. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this particular one comes from uh, the time when David had just finished collecting all the materials to build the temple uh, that his son Solomon, Solomon will, will, will build. But he's collecting all, all the things that is to be needed to build that temple for the Lord. And so here he utters this this song of praise to the Lord after having gathered all the material. Okay, so we'll read it. First Chronicles 16 verses 23 to 25. And it reads, sing to the Lord all the earth, proclaim his salvation day after day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Amen. Amen. And so note here that uh, David here in, in this message, it sets the stage for God's praise. So to demonstrate that he, he is worthy of, of praise. He, we declare his glory among all, all the nations. No other nation has a God, not not even a real God at all. And, and of course, we know there's no one to be compared with our God. And that's basically what, what uh, David is saying in here. And he says, sing to the Lord, lift that up, lift, lift up the fact that our God is so marvelous and, and his so many deeds and his glory. And he gives, he gives life. Proclaim that life. That's his salvation. Proclaim his salvation day after day. And so in that, we, we praise the Lord. And that is the reason we praise the Lord. That is the reason for this message, because of God's greatness. And so, um, <clears throat> Moses, and I can't really see the title of this, but I'll just read the message here. Uh, Moses looked to the Lord for guidance in his teachings. He asked that the words will fall like rain, dew, and showers on grass. Clearly, this symbolizes that the people will grow from them. He goes on to say the teachings will proclaim the name and praise the greatness of God. David's song, and, and that's the next passage, begins by encouraging the people to proclaim his salvation, God's salvation, that is, day after day. We know the love in our salvation from Christ. This marvelous deed was a sacrifice truly worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. And so these are all glorious reasons for praising, praising the, uh, the Lord, his, his wonderful deeds. And uh, he is definitely worthy of praise. When I say that word, I think of... Uh, someone from our prayer call, Mother Couch. Mm -hmm. And she uses that, that, that God is worthy of praise. He is worthy of our praise. He does so many wonderful things and he is he's our God. And he, he gives us life and love and he loves us. He is worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. now let's go back to Jehoshaphat's praises bring victory. Okay. So uh, now here, I want to give you a little context 
here a group of nations, Ammon, Moab, and there was one other one, I can't think of that name. Well, they were from Mount Seir. I can't think of the exact name of the nation, but it was a group from Mount Seir. And they all came out to, to make war with, with uh, Israel. Jehos Jehoshaphat was king there. And, uh, and someone went and said to Jehoshaphat that there was a great army on the way to attack us. And, and so Jehoshaphat, uh, let's, let's begin here with the reading. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. As they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. Amen. Amen. Now, what an amazing thing that was. And, and this great army was coming who evidently was greater than uh, Jehoshaphat's army or greater than the people didn't believe that they could defeat that army. And, and uh, well, you would have to read, read all the, the information, the context for this to, to see, realize how, how big the threat was. And so Jehoshaphat uh, uh, caused the people to sing praises to the Lord. That was his defense, the Lord. And we see the results of that in verse 22. As they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. Now, Amen. such as this. Now, when we think of our enemies and we, when we think of praising the Lord, well, we're not so much concerned about a, a nation or another group of people going against us and fighting against us, but the evil one himself. And, and that applies to us here. When we praise the Lord and lift him up and praise and pray, then he defeats our enemies and he frees us from them. If that enemy is here to cause us to be sick or, or some illness in our body, the Lord can defeat that. If that enemy is here to cause us distress by uttering words of, against us, the Lord can stop that. He is able. He is worthy of praise. Amen. Now we go to our next set of passages. Through praise, he established a stronghold against his enemies. Okay, we'll begin with Psalm 8, verses 1 through 2. Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Amen. Okay, let's go to our next passage. Lifting and giving a hymn of praise for waiting. That is uh, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 3. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Now, notice, notice uh, the psalmist here. First, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he answered, and he turned, not answered, but turned to me. In other translation, it would say he answered. He turned to me and heard my cry. So, <clears throat> what that means is he, he, he heard his, well, he heard his prayer, of course, but he turned to him 
which means he answered his prayer because the Lord gave him himself. And when the Lord gives you himself, it solves the problem. And it goes on to say, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. So you know that rock is symbolic of Christ. And if he gave him to Christ, he, that is a firm place to stand because we all stand on Christ. We all rest in Christ. We all are in Christ for our protection. So no enemy can defeat or feed us. Okay, and the psalmist went on to say, he put a new song in my mouth. Now this encouragement caused the song, psalmist to want to just sing a hymn of praise. And that's what he does to us. He causes us to want to praise to him. And when we go to our services on worship, we, our worship service, we praise the Lord. When we come together, we sing and we praise the Lord. Joanna just sung us a wonderful song of praise before we started this message. And the Lord, he, he receives these praises. It lifts him. And in turn, he lifts us. He lifts our heart and he answers our prayers. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, let's, let us read. Uh, he puts praises in our in us and and here on, on my screen i can't read the entire entire title there but you can the uh, the 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 uh, writing in in gold there okay so but i can read the green notice the progression of events in the passage above the psalmist waited patiently for the lord and the Lord turned to him and heard his cry. He lifted him up out of the mire. This is to say he sought the Lord and the Lord gave himself to him. After taking him out of the mire, he placed him on a rock, giving him a firm place to stand. He put a new song in his mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Now the psalmist, like many, will be blessed in the Lord, lifting up praises to him. Amen. Amen. And, and as mentioned above, when we seek the Lord and when we lift him up in prayer, he hears us. And not only does he hear us, he answers us. And for the psalmist here, he put a new song in his mouth. And so the psalmist was very happy with the results. And so he praised the Lord even more. Amen. Sing praises to our king. And for that, we'll go to Psalms 47. We'll read verse 5 through 7. We'll, we'll begin there. And then there's, I'm sure, at least one other psalm to follow. God has ascended amid showers of joy. The Lord amid the sounding of trumpets, sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth, sing to him a psalm of praise. Amen. Amen. Now, we'll go to enter his court with praise. And for that, we'll go to Psalm 100, verses 1 through 4. Shout joyfully to the Lord. And the earth, serve the Lord with jubilation. Come before him with rejoicing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courtyards with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. shout before him joyfully. Praise the Lord. Just praise him. Okay, and so some comments on those psalms, those beautiful psalms that we read. 
The psalmist above encourage us to serve the Lord with jubilation and rejoice. We are the sheep of his pasture, urged to enter his court with praise and thanksgiving. He ascends amidst our shouts of joy, music, singing, singing, no, music and singing praises and giving thanks to him who made us. And all these we exalt and bless his holy name. Amen. Amen. Now here, I, I want to comment on something. He ascends amid our shouts of joy. Now, earlier in the introduction, I uh, shared with you the fact that praising the Lord and exalting the Lord is, 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 is basically the same thing. It has the same effect. It lifts, lifts God up. That's what he wants us to do. He wants his people to lift him. He ascends amid, amid our shouts of joy, music, singing, praises. He is lifted up by those things. And he in turn lifts us up. Amen? Amen. Praising and giving thanks to the Lord. Praising the Lord. Psalm 105, verses 1 and 2. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonders. Amen. Okay, Psalm 106. I, I like this. This is the psalm for this message. Well, no, I'm sorry. This is not the one that I'm thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, false alert. But it's coming. Praise the Lord, or oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is everlasting. Who can speak of the mighty deeds of the Lord, or can proclaim all his praise? Now here, I have a few comments on this. Who can speak of the mighty deeds of the Lord? Well, here, I, and I believe what this is trying to convey is that there's too many. So no one can know he has, there's so many mighty deeds, who can speak of them? And, and that's why this is questionable. Or can proclaim all his praise. No one can proclaim all his praise because he's just too big. He's, he's larger than life, it's, than the life that's in us. And so no one can, can really measure the depth of the Lord, the depth of his deeds, no the death of, of, of his proclaim, what he is due, but we do our best. So let's praise him, brothers and sisters. Let's continue to praise him. Everything with breath shall praise the Lord. Okay, we begin with Psalm 145, verse uh, 21, and then we'll move to that verse when I, that I alerted you about earlier that I didn't deliver, but it will be delivered. Okay, and here it says, my mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. 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 Praise in the Lord is powerful. Okay, now Psalm 146, verse one and two says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will praise, I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Okay, now Psalm 150, verses one through six. Praise the Lord, with an exclamation mark. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tabourine and dancing. Praise him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding symbols. Everything that has breath shall praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Praise Amen. The Lord. <laughs> praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. What a psalm of praise that is. Praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. That's why we're here today to praise the Lord. Okay, here, some further comments. The psalmist above repeatedly emphasized the indispensable practice of praising the Lord. We praise him for his greatness, his mighty deeds, and all that he is, as well as all that is to come. We praise him wherever we are and with whatever instrument we have to accompany us. We praise him with our lips, as well as our hearts and souls. The word encourages us to praise him as long as we have life in us, with the life itself as an instrument of our praise. Amen. 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 Lord, thank you for giving us praise. Okay. So now let's go to Nebuchadnezzar's dream revealed to Daniel. Okay, and that uh, reading will be in uh, Daniel 2, verses 19 through 23. But uh, <clears throat> let me give you some context for this. Now, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that no one could interpret. And, and he, he uh, consulted all, he consulted his wise men and the, the one of the, I believe the, the leader of, of uh, or the head of all his wise men, and he just told the king that that no one could interpret. Uh, well, let's back up a while. Nebuchadnezzar not only wanted his wise men to interpret his dream, but he wanted him to he he wanted to prove that this interpretation would be correct. He wanted to, the wise men to tell him his dream. And, and of course they couldn't do it and no one could do it among the wise, wise men. So he decided he had told, he called a leader and said, put all the wise men to death. Now at this time, Daniel himself was one of the wise men. And so he gave him a time, uh, again, I can't remember what that was to put that, that he would put them all to death. And, uh, and so Daniel was informed of, of, of the, uh, his, his decree to, to take the life of all the wise men. And he had the, the, the person to go back and tell the king, the messenger, to go back and tell, tell Nebuchadnezzar that he, couldn't, he, he would give him the answer to his dream, and which, which we know was an amazing thing. And so he went to the king and he said, uh, you know, uh, no one can, can, can tell, can interpret a dream, but, there is a, but we have a God who will give you the interpretation. So Dan, Daniel didn't take credit for being the interpreter or being wise or anything, but he, he would go to God and God would give them the answer, give him the dream and give him the interpretation. And, and, and so that's the situation that we see here. That is the context of this, the reading that we have here. And so all of that, uh, these four verses come out of here regarding praising the Lord. During the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. The, then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, praise be to the name of God forever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes times and seasons. He disposes kings and raises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. Amen. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness and light dwells with him. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we ask of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Amen. Amen. Okay, and so our next uh, passage would be, or passages, blessed to the praise of his glory. 
Okay. And that comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6. And the scripture reads, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he has, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we also have, oh, oh just one second here. Okay, and, and we, we'll go on to uh, verses 11 through 12. In him, we also have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things in accordance with the plan of his will. To the end, that we who were the first to hope in the Christ would be to the praise of his glory. Amen. Amen. We do have some further comments on what we've read. Okay. And it says, the Father has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. He gave us these blessings in Christ. He predestined us to adoption as sons. In this, he accomplished his will that we would be holy and blameless. According to the kindness of his will, we are the praise of the glory of his grace, which he bestowed on us in Christ. And so, before the foundation of the world, God predestined us for his praise. Amen. 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 Okay, sacrifices and praise. Okay, Hebrews 13, verses 15 through 16. Through him, then, let's continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. And th that would be Christ. <laughs> that is, the fruit of our fruit of lips, praising his name, and do not neglect doing good and sharing and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Amen. Now here, note, note, note it says uh, through him, through Christ, let's continually offer up sacrifice of praise to God. Through Christ, because God has placed us in Christ, first of all, for that very reason. And second of all, because uh, we're given the, the, through Christ, we're given the wisdom and, and, and the knowledge to praise, to praise God. And, and we're given the words, he puts the words on our, on our lips. And we praise his name. That is, his name is his character, his divine attributes, his glory. When we praise, praise his name, we're praising everything that he is. That's his name, our God. And we don't neglect doing good. We praise and we do good for with such, and this is like a sacrifice. You know, the, the ancient Israelites, they gave blood sacrifices. But what do we give God? We give him our hearts. And therefore, here, God gives us hearts that are, that are filled with praise because they're given for the purpose of praising him. Amen. Amen. That brings us to the conclusion. Now, first passage here. First Chronicles 29, 10. David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. <coughs> mm. 
Okay, um, next passage is from Nehemiah 8, uh, verses 5 through 6. Now here, on this occasion, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the men of, of Israel who has, who has just returned to, uh, to Jerusalem to, to start to work on the temple. And here, in, in this context, they have just finished the wall. And now Ezra here, Ezra is a Levite. He, he, he was a, well, no, Ezra was not a Levite. He was a scribe. He was, he was not a priest. It's, Nehemiah was, I believe, a priest. As it was a scribe, okay. Now, and scribes, they they take they manage the 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 writings that therefore the books, and they read from the books to the people. Here, now here here is they they've just they're celebrating the the um, having finished the wall here. As we open the book, all the people could see him because he was standing above them. They had built a platform for Ezra to do this very thing, this occasion here. And as he opened it, the people all stood up. Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded, amen, amen. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground, amen. amen. Okay, the next passage is uh, 1 Peter 4, verse 11. And it says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Verse 11, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. And, and that is to say, what reason is through Jesus Christ because everything we have is what Christ has given us. He's given us these spiritual gifts. And so we, we should use them to the praise of God's glory. And that last sentence here, to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this wonderful message of praise you've given to us today, Lord. And we just pray that this message is received by all who are listening, Lord, and, and that, that we'll start just lifting up our praises to, to you as never before. Lord, we thank you for all the things that you're doing in our lives. And we, we pray that you continue your wonderful work and be with us and, and keep lifting up our hearts and putting hymns of praise in our hearts and, and just cause everyone to just praise you even as one. And we, we thank you and we give you all the honor all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.